Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match. This time, Ryanmark versus Never and Never has apparently won a few matches since the last game, given their LO value raised between games, or rose between games. So this is going to be Ryanmark and Never on Red Comet, a rather typical map, which I actually have not shown in a long time. Didn't come up last tournament. Very surprising. Red Comet comes up all the time, but I guess it's kind of fallen out of favor. Also very surprising that if that's true. Anyhow. That aside, let's go over the map since I haven't gone over it in a while. This map is, as you can see, rectangular with a massive concentration of resources in the center. Start points are, well, start boxes are the west side and east side. And in both cases, you basically have two relatively viable start locations and one cheese location. So center and northeast, or center and southwest, those are the typical locations, usually southwest and northeast. Where never has started, that is a very typical location. Rymark, however, is starting a bit more forward. The center location is great for trying to basically take all of this really easily. The only hard part is that you're vulnerable from the north more easily, and also you just have more areas your opponent can approach you from. Now, the north, west, and southeast are kind of cheese locations. The entire point of those locations is to minimize the rush distance to the typical location your opponent will likely start in, so this basically counters the cheese strategy. But most people start in the northeast or southwest, so this cheese location allows for that. That's not happening this game, but it's really cool when it does. So yeah, Rymark being a bit more aggressive forward and trying to basically take this without having to push forward. Never, on the other hand, being a little more defensive, will have an easier time defending these metal extractors, and then we'll be moving out west and taking these ones over here. We'll probably not take the center ones, or center eastern ones, for probably the first five minutes or so. While Rymark will likely be taking this entire section kind of all in one go. Anyway, that is the introduction. Let's get to the game itself. So, never going for light vehicles. Totally expected. This is a very flat map. Like, it's... It is flat. It is f as... F whoops. It's as flat as the plains of Alberta. Well, actually, anywhere from Alberta through Manitoba, really. I don't know how they can live without mountains. Really, I just... I can't understand that. Even when I was in Chicago a couple weeks ago, it was like... Just... Just... I mean, really, that's... No. South of Manitoba. But it was still... It was still weird. I couldn't get my sense of distance right, because there were no mountains. Like, when you live in a mountainous forested region, and you go to a flatland, it's just bizarre. Anyway, never coming in with a nice... Nice scout. Very nice scout, actually. Escaped! <laughs> The best kind of scouting, the scouting that escapes and then sees where the builder's going as she gets in the way. I should point out Shieldbot Factory from Rymark, which is a little bit unusual, both for Rymark and for this map. Now, Shieldbots are perfectly viable on this map. I've actually seen them a few times. They're a little bit tricky because of the size, but they are doable. However, against light vehicles, Rymark's going to have to worry about levelers coming in from Never. Now, of course, Rymark's also going to have to worry about this dark coming in the north, and they have worried about it successfully, putting the bandit in the way. However, Rymark, if they focus on bandits, it won't be too bad. They probably will, just because of the size of the map. We'll probably see a shield ball from them later on. Because, like I said, that... I mean, like I said, it's viable. That's usually what happens with shield balls. You get... Sorry, shield factory. You get shield balls. Thug, outlaw, felon. That's how it goes. Never, on the other hand, will probably just go for the standard Scorcher into a leveler. They don't seem to be going for a bunch of slashes at this point. Actually, they don't seem to be going for much of anything at this point. They're focused entirely on building up their economy as quickly as possible and basically trying to build minimal units. And they're actually going for these very early. That's a little unexpected. They are going for the northern ones, but not as aggressively as, say, someone like Lori or Floris would. That's usually who I see playing... People like that who I see playing in this map will really go for these expansions in the center. But no, Never's not going for those. They're playing it a little bit safer, taking the further back expansions. Not sure if they're going to try to defend this choke point, though, because that is going to be the main weakness right now. Now... On the other hand, never try their best to flank, and this is where the light vehicles will have a bit of an advantage, is being able to do these flanking maneuvers. Unfortunately for them, they were not quite far enough to take full advantage of it, but still able to pick up a nice, ooh, nice free two. Nah, just one free bandit. Oh well. That was still good. That was still free. Like, never got that. And at this point, Rymark ahead in economy, though. They have the Northwest. Every flanking attack from never is not really able to work. Rymark must have radar. Oh yeah, Rymark totally has radar. Pretty much their entire half of the map is covered. Everything they care about, they know about. And Never, on the other hand, is also well aware of what's going on. The south side is completely terra incognita. Neither player cares so much, though. I mean, Never is looking. They want to make sure Rymark hasn't set anything up down there. And Rymark is just about to, so nice timing. However, to the north, the Stardust being complete will spell the end of Never's harassment attempts. 
And that's going to happen before. If never harasses right now, it still won't work. Nope, that Tardis will be up too soon. But yeah, the Southwest, at least blocking that from happening while Never continues to expand slowly but surely. Their commander being idle, their workers being sort of idle. One of their workers being idle. Well, not idle, but not building expansion either, because it has to defend. And nice use of the shield there. Always, always clever to see that. And this raid here from Never is a really bad idea. It's not hitting the Lotus. It's not hitting any. It's closing off power plants, which is okay, but it's not enough to start accessing, so it actually didn't do any good. Rymark was not forced to access because of that. So that really made no difference. And getting stopped by the dirtbags, so essentially wasting their power. Now I should point out, of course, that this entire area of the Northwest is safe. There is no way that Rymar can lose it without either air or... I guess Ravagers, Ravagers would get rid of it, but Ravagers are not on the menu right now. They aren't coming up. We do see that Never, now that they have their metal, is building with the Caretaker. They built it a little late. This is where the plus 20 hump comes in that I mentioned, I've mentioned before. I haven't talked about recently, but yeah. Getting the plus 20 metal and not having the build power to use it. Oh, nice! That is really nice. I mean, Never is really showing why vehicles have an easier time in this map. The Scorch is just having loads of room to retreat to. Slightly better micro from Rymark, though. Just dancing around that ma Mason as if it was nothing. And able to get rid of the Scorchers eventually, but losing... Oh, well, didn't matter. I was about to say, losing almost all their ba bandits. Almost all of them. That's the biggest, biggest thing there. As a result, Never can't really expand over here. Never had just about defended that too, but not quite well enough. Unfortunately, that last shot where the Scorchers tried going around the Mason was their death. The only chance they had was the retreating, and then that little impromptu wall, that, that saved it for Rymark. That's exactly what made it work. So at this point, Never, continuing along with the Scorchers, I really would recommend going for levelers right about now. Because, first off, they kill bandits pretty easily. And secondly, the next likely thing that's going to happen will be either Rogue or Thuglaw. Now, given no interference, I mean, we do see a lot of dirtbags coming in, which is somewhat unusual, but not so much for Rymark. I was going to say, for Rymark, as unusual, they're not going for jump bots, because Rymark loves their jump bots, but they are going for the only jumping fat unit of the Shieldbot factory. So at least that's something. It's the, it's the closest they can get to their factory of choice. They love jump bots. Even when they're playing shields, they're playing jump bots. <sighs> but yeah, the most likely thing most shield bot players will do is, of course, the Thug Outlaw Ball. And the levelers counter that. And then, of course, Scorchers counter felons if they're built up as a counter of counters. Unfortunately, these Scorchers are dead. I'm calling it right now. They are all dead. And these bandits are also dead. Thanks to Machine Gun. But yeah, Scorchers are, all of them, to a vehicle, dead. They would have actually had a chance if they had rushed up. Oh, you know what? No, yeah, they would have had a chance. Had they rushed up right next to the Stardust and surrounded it on all sides, they would have killed it. And then died in the resulting explosion, but, you know, it would have, if it really, really, really clever micro, maybe they would have survived. This Scorcher, however, is doing a much better job harassing, keeping Rymark from getting completely out of control, though. Rymark is, arguably, with 30 metal to 20 metal, still out of control. Yeah, they're, they're way ahead at this point. Never, just now rebuilding the Northwest, or not Northwest, sorry, the North side. No, they're not going to take the Northwest. Just now rebuilding the North side, and actually threatening the Northwest despite the Stardust. They should be able to get rid of at least two. Yeah, they're going to get rid of this one. And they are keeping... Oh! Death Explosion on the Metal Extractor saves the rest of the base. Kind of a bit of a lucky thing, but it's always worth bearing in mind that stuff tends to explode when it dies. And if your units are at very low health, enemy unit bursts will kill them. Rymark? Yeah, Rymark did have a shield. Area shield and personal shield on that one commander. I don't really see the personal shield, but I guess that's superseded by the area shield. Anyhow, that is... That's useful. Must be level 2, though. Level 3? Wow, okay, level 3 commander from Rymark. They're kind of taking the piss a bit, I'm thinking. However, never coming in with a nice harassment force. I mean, these Scorchers are doing a decent harassment job. And that Stardust has not been repaired. Another wave of Scorchers would actually take care of it. In this entire north side, there is a Lotus and there is a Commander. The Commander, however, has no weapons, just the shield and the shield and bypass. Scorchers have gotten in. That Commander is dead. This area is dead. All this power is de probably dead. And that Stardust is going to be killed in the second wave of Scorchers that come in. However, at the same time, the Bandit's coming in. Rymark not going to take that lying down with a Bandit's coming in the north. However, these Scorchers are... Never's not paying attention to them. They could be destroying this entire northwest side, and Never's not paying attention to them, and now at this point, Never is going to have to deal with these bandits 
with the Scorchers at home and no levelers. I said levelers would be a good idea, and this was why. Because you need to micro your butt off to get the Scorchers to do any good against this many bandits. But levelers give you that for free. And unfortunately, never had not quite thought about that. So they are not going to be able to easily get rid of these bandits. They will be able to get rid of them, but at decent costs. They lost, what, four or five Scorchers to that? And also lost the ability to pay attention to these Scorchers in the meantime. Like, these Scorchers now have to deal with dirtbags at the same time, now have much more pathing problems to deal with. They could have been attacking the Stardust had never just had Levelers not had to worry about it. They could have been not paying attention to the Levelers at home, paying all the attention to the Scorchers out in the field, and they would have been able to take the Northwest side. But instead, they lost all the Scorchers. It's a slight difference in outcome, I'm not gonna lie. It, there's, there are some slight differences. I'm not sure if it's easy to spot, but hopefully my commentary has helped elucidate that for you. Because those were subtle. Yeah. It's... Unfortunately for Never, it wasn't the kill everything option. So Never, still actually not doing too badly economically though. They've managed to get in some headway as far as economic harassment goes. Their military is about on par. And their Scorchers are still doing relatively well. I mean, I would still recommend Levelers. Especially now with the Felon up. Actually, I'd recommend Ravagers against the Felon. But... Yeah, Ramark, easy counters are part of the game. Relying on easy counters is just being cost-effective. That's that's how you play it. The fact that Never isn't doing that is a weakness that can be exploited. And as with all weaknesses in a competitive game, at least within the game itself, with, in terms of in terms of a person's playstyle, exploiting them is a good idea. So yeah, go for the type counters. That is a very good idea. At least, okay, I'm kind of biased because I personally tend to go for type counters a lot. I have a tendency to not build enough economy and focus much more on being cost-effective by type counters. So it'll be one of those things where as I get my macro up, I become much scarier because then I have the type counters as well as enough units that it doesn't even matter whether or not I had type counters, but because I do, it's even more efficient. However, I haven't had a chance to play too much recently, so I'm a little rusty. Anyway, that's the style I like to go for, that's the style I like to see, and these Scorchers are getting taken out by a Roach. Very nice placement of the roach there. That's always a scary thing about the Shieldbot Factory. One of the things that makes it very difficult to destroy the factory itself is the roach. Either built on reaction or just placed there well in advance. And slashers are an interesting choice, but this is why I wouldn't recommend them. As you can see, the felon just tears them apart. Levelers, I wouldn't recommend either. Ravagers, I'd recommend just for the tanking properties. Levelers... I don't think their splash damage is enough to actually get through these shields. Now, getting through the support shields, yes, levelers work wonders for that. But not getting through the main shields. Getting through the main shields does not actually help there. So that, yeah, that is where I'd recommend using the Ravagers, just to tank it. But the commander works fine. I mean, that worked okay. Not great. That was a lot of slashes that died for nothing. But now the felon's dead, and now all of these bandits are dead. Sorry, convicts are dead. And where are the bandits coming in? There are no bandit follow-ups! There's Thug! That's it! Never's actually in a really good position. Never just needs to expand. Like, right now, all Never needs to do is go around the south, take all these metal extractors, because they have nothing to worry about right now. Rymark's not going to be able to counterattack easily. They have the advantage of speed. Like, their units just can get about wherever they need to go on reaction. They don't even need to predict anything. Rymark is basically... They need to try to find some way to force Never into a particular field of battle, and Never has too much in the way of static defense and is too spread out for that to really be the case. Never, because of their speed, they're going to be forcing Rymark's hand to where Rymark attacks, and that's going to end up... That's going to end up being a problem. And, yeah, Rymark... Okay, I guess Rymark was trying to teach? Not sure why they went for Shieldbot Factory. I mean, like I said, it's viable on this map, but it becomes harder and harder to play as the game goes on, just because... Just the speed advantage. Because Never chooses where Rymark fights, and Rymark can't really go for bandits as well. They have the dirt bags, which is good. That does limit where Never can go. But still, it's not enough. Never is... Never is probably going to take this match. And they are expanding. Wonderful. They expanded to the south. They are listening to me in the future. Or at least realize the thing to do. But I think the narcissistic option is the funnier one. Because narcissism is always funny, except when it's happening to you. Anyway. Dirtbag is pretty clear sign of desperation, I think. I don't think Rymark is 
pretty confident they're going to be able to actually do much more than just spam dirtbags and hope for the best. Because the dirtbags, they're, yeah, they're easy to kill. The best thing they're gonna, they have is the fact that they kind of block off the area, so it makes it harder for Never to maneuver. But Never could probably send a few masons around and just level out everything. But we'll see. Rogues come in here. This is what I expected for levelers, not so much for scorchers. And this Stardust has been repaired, by the way, so that is going to be harder for the scorchers to get through. I'm still surprised they're having no levelers or ravagers. I don't understand why Never is going for slashers. Like, they actually aren't doing much good compared to what levelers or ravagers would do. And the scorchers are... That's just asking to die. The only reason that there's been any chance here is because thugs have not been involved in this shield ball. In fact, I think the thugs are all dead. Because thugs are not in that felon shield ball, there was a chance. But that was it. Never really needs to worry... Like, why are they building slashers? I don't understand slashers. Felons basically beat slashers. They definitely beat... Like, well, just above these scorchers. Scorchers have an okay chance that there's only one felon and no real shield support. But yeah, felon thug... Especially felon thug outlaw scorchers would be dead. Levelers would be f okay. Ravagers would be fine. Level of Ravager together would completely destroy it. And once again, we see Rymar coming in with that same build, which actually is probably the best thing they can do against Never at this point. Because Never's not responding to it. They just happen to have enough of an economy that it doesn't matter. That's the only reason it's working. But yeah, Rymark managed to stabilize, and that will allow them a little bit of leeway. But at this point, Never has expanded the way I recommended they do. And why is this Mason dying? Never is just deciding that to let a Mason die. Sporting Tribute. Oh! The commander just about saved the Mason by getting in the way of the lasers. But nope! That Mason was just doomed to die. Never didn't care about it anymore. It's abandoned it to its fate. Which is... About the same as what's happening to these slashers. Although, that is putting pressure. Okay, I'll take that back. Slashers in large enough numbers do put enough pressure on the Felon to stop it from being able to do too much damage. I mean, it can't actually really attack just because it can't recharge in time. Once again, in a case where Thug Outlaw on top of Felon would probably work. More Thug, the Outlaws don't really make a difference. But the Thugs, yeah, the Thug with the Felon, the Felon providing more of the shields, and the Thugs being able to walk up to the slashers and either kill them or just force them to move back, allowing the Felon to get a bit more shield energy to kill the slashers while they're running away. That works. But, yeah, really, Never's kind of getting away with this. Like, Rymark with Thug Outlaw would be a problem, with Napalm would be a problem. Rapiers wouldn't be a problem, I don't think, but yeah, Napalm would be a problem. No, actually, Napalm even would be kind of risky due to the slashers. Against the Scorchers alone would be okay, but then again, the Felon's fine. Yeah, I think Thug... Adding thugs to this ball and then moving forward, like, you know, these thugs. Thugs such as these, for instance, and then moving forward, as Rymark is doing, and then causing the slashers to either be killed or move back in order to not die in order to get killed by the felon, as we're seeing right now. Rymark is demonstrating exactly what I was talking about and why what I mentioned was a good idea. Because it was. I don't think Rymark's even lost a unit at this point. Especially since these can just repair. These convicts can repair everything while they're doing this. So if any damage gets through the shields, it's not going to last for too long. Now, I don't think Rymark's actually... Re no, Rymark is repairing. Yep. So they are, in fact, repairing as they go. Did they lose anything in the process? I think that was free. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they just managed to kill all of those slashers at no cost to themselves. This is where Shieldbot shines, is when it gets that ball going together. It's just Rymark hadn't built up that ball. That Felon Convict was not enough. It needs to be Felon Thug. Felon Thug Outlaw, preferably. Felon Thug Outlaw Convict is obviously a really good ball. I mean, that is extremely scary as a ball. But Felon Convict, that has counters it shouldn't have. Or that gets countered by things that shouldn't. And here we finally see the levelers. About time. Never finally builds the levelers. Although I think even at this point, and the help of the thugs, but I'm not sure if it's enough. There are just too many thugs. There are two dozen thugs. That's a lot of thugs. That's like two New York Street Gangs, right there. Just banding together to fight against these tanks. Actually, I'm not sure if there's a headcount limit for New York Street Gangs. But I'm guessing it's 12. And at this point, we do see the levelers. Well, they are doing what they do best. That's why I recommended levelers. They, I mean, the splash damage is still awesome, even with that number of thugs. 
but this is where Ravagers are necessary. You need to have the Leveler and Ravager. The Levelers don't have enough health. They kind of do, but they mostly don't. And where are those Rogues? Because I mentioned earlier that Rogue would be the counter to the counter. They would help against the Levelers, but that's where you'd end up having Scorchers coming in to help deal with the Rogues. And also, I think the Ancient Slashes would also kind of help with Rogues as well. So yeah, no, I didn't mention that, but they would too. But yeah, Rogues... If Rymar goes for Rogues on top of this, I don't think they have to. I think they have enough units, it doesn't matter. They have the economic advantage back. They're smashing up all of Never's economy, and Never actually had a pretty good shot there for a little while. But Rymar managed to out-expand, to re-expand, and then pushed out with the Thug Law Ball. The Thug Felon Ball basically did the trick. And Rymar pointing out exactly what I was about to say, that Never let their eco didn't, their eco didn't quite expand as quickly as they could have. They didn't raid as much as they, especially once they got the upper hand. And they never built levelers until it was too late. They, they had built levelers with that earlier Scorcher Army when the first few thugs came out. That probably would have done the trick. But they built slashers instead, and the slashers did no good. And the slashers, I think, were the biggest mistake there. So anyway, that was that. Much more interesting game than the Finn's Revenge one, that's for sure. And never... I'd say they have definitely learned some lessons from the Finn's Revenge game. They, they have learned and grown since then, in the last week. But now we're going to move on to another player. This wasn't just watching the progress of Never over the course of a week. We're going to be moving on to Dancer and Kane on Desert Cliffs. So Dancer, by the way, is the... They are a player who, last time we saw them, was an icy shell playing an extremely good defensive game. So we'll see how they play Desert Cliffs. I think Desert Cliffs is too small for that sort of thing to work. It doesn't have a big overdrivable mechs in the center. I mean, it's the same size, but because of the terrain, it doesn't quite feel as big. And without the big overdrivable mechs in the center, it... We'll see. Maybe they'll do something clever. I'm really curious to see what will happen, so let's go watch that in a minute or two. When I get back, stay tuned for that. 